Lunar Lake is Intel's latest range of processors for low-powered thin and light laptops, and we have two of the most exciting ones here right now. Lenovo's Yoga Slim 7i OR Edition and Asus' ZenBook S14. We've been testing these like crazy for the last two weeks, and we have a big show for you today. But since you're watching one of our videos, we aren't going to make you watch this whole thing to find out what's going on. Instead, I'm just going to tell you right now. To show you how these new processors stack up, I've put together a heat map. This highlights where these do well and where they don't. As you can see, Lunar Lake has much improved single-core performance, which will make many applications feel snappy. It has fantastic integrated graphics performance and very long battery life, rivaling MacBooks. And good news, heat you feel and fan noise is really a thing of the past with these new laptops. Finally, unlike Qualcomm's recently released Snapdragon processors, these have broad application compatibility, as they use the standard x86 architecture. Where these new Lunar Lake laptops do not do well is in multi-core performance. This is what is used by more demanding applications. People are going to be pointing this out in absolute horror, and I get it. But the reality is that the current batch of these processors are meant to replace the Core Ultra 5U series from Intel's older Meteor Lake line, now known as Core Ultra Series 1. Those processors are low wattage ones just like these, and they deliver similar multi-core results. To be clear, we do not like that there isn't an improvement in multi-core performance, but given the immense progress in other areas, we feel that this isn't a deal breaker for Lunar Lake. Given their lower multi-core performance, these new processors will not be found in any large and powerful laptops, such as those used by professional video editors or programmers, or even those looking for a high-powered gaming laptop. Intel has another range of chips coming for you called Arrow Lake. Core Ultra Series 1, though, will still be sold in larger, more powerful laptops. That is because the Ultra 7 and 9 processors from this range have more cores, can be fed significantly higher wattage, and consequently perform much better in multi-core performance. And for extremely large laptops, they are still coming with Intel's Raptor Lake processors known as 14th Gen. Those have even more cores and draw even more power. Overall, for tasks like office work, browsing the web, responding to emails, and even some light gaming or editing simple video projects, we found the performance of Lunar Lake to be really good. So, how do they stack up versus the other processors in small and light laptops like these? Versus Qualcomm Snapdragon X processors, which are found in similar sized laptops to Lunar Lake, Intel delivers faster single core performance, longer battery life, significantly better graphics, and broader application compatibility. Qualcomm, on the other hand, delivers considerably better multi-core performance. This should make Snapdragon laptops more appropriate for demanding applications. But keep in mind, a lot of professional applications don't work well on Windows on ARM, and neither do a ton of games. I'd recommend getting a Qualcomm laptop over Lunar Lake if you need additional CPU performance for intensive applications. But just make sure that you have thoroughly checked that your applications will work. For my personal use case where I use a thin and light laptop in conjunction with a larger, more powerful one, I would definitely prefer a Lunar Lake laptop over a Qualcomm one. The better application compatibility, longer battery life, and extra graphics performance matter more to me. But you will not always have a choice of processor. Many laptops only come with one of them. Versus AMD's new Zen 5 processors, AMD wins by being good at everything. It does not have the high highs of Lunar Lake and Snapdragon, but it doesn't suffer from their downsides either. It's the good all-rounder. Now, AMD Zen 5 processors, unlike Lunar Lake, will be available in the full range of laptops, from smaller ones right through to larger, more powerful ones. There can be a slight difference in core count, but the main difference is how much power is being fed to their processors, and that equates to differences in performance. In smaller laptops, we found that those with AMD Zen 5 processors feel warmer to the touch than those with Lunar Lake or Snapdragon, but still better than laptops from last year. Now, when it comes to Apple, M3 is still the king of single-core performance, and it trades blows with Lunar Lake for the best battery life. Apple wins in performance tasks when on battery, and Lunar Lake wins for light tasks when on battery. I do like that all these Windows manufacturers are now placing pressure on Apple by including 16 gig of memory as a minimum. This all being said, Apple laptops with M3 are still great reliable machines with minimal issues. A lot of these laptops that we've tried with Lunar Lake, Snapdragon, and Zen 5, they still suffer from one or more core usability issues, like a poorer quality trackpad. But some folks just won't want a Mac. And at this price point, Apple's MacBook Air doesn't have the bells and whistles of some of these Windows laptops, like a faster refresh rate display. Overall, given that M4 MacBooks are right around the corner, I don't think Apple has anything to worry about here. With all that out of the way, now it's time to get into the charts. Wait a minute, I think I, I think I set it to the wrong channel. Back to you, Josh. Thanks, Steve. Let's put our big boy pants on and get into the details. 
Intel has launched a completely unnecessary nine Lunar Lake processors. All of them have eight cores, four performance and four efficient cores, and they no longer offer simultaneous multi-threading. The processors themselves only differ by minor clock speeds. Where they do differ is that the Ultra 5 variants have 8 megabytes of cache and slower integrated graphics. The Ultra 7s have 12 megabytes of cache and faster graphics. All of these processors draw a range of 8 to 37 watts of power, except the highest end 288V SKU. That one draws a minimum of 17 watts. The SKUs ending in 6V means that they come with 16 gig of memory, and the SKUs ending in 8V means that they come with 32. Memory is now integrated into the overall CPU package. This makes it faster, but it isn't upgradable. Wi-Fi 7 and Bluetooth 5.4, they are also integrated and not upgradable. When compared with competing processors, the material points to note are that these new Lunar Lake processors draw very little power. They also have the lowest core count of currently available CPUs, and their max operating temperature has been dropped back down to 100 degrees Celsius from 110 of Meteor Lake. I wouldn't get caught up comparing the gigahertz of these processors as their instructions per clock are all different. We'll get into this as we walk you through performance. Let's start with Geekbench, which tests a variety of common performance tasks that many people will do on their laptops. In single core, we are seeing a big step up for Intel. Not quite as strong as AMD Zen 5 and certainly not Apple, but stronger than Qualcomm. Switching to multi-core, this is where we see laptops powered by these chips really fall behind new releases from other manufacturers. When compared to Qualcomm's lower-end X Plus chip in the VivaBook, as well as the M3 MacBook Air, they're about neck and neck. On to Cinebench, which tests the processors when maxed out, we see Lunar Lake do very well in single core. Best of any Windows laptop, even beating out the Zen 5 365 chip. Please note, we have noticed an issue with our Slim 7i Aura Edition, where it underperforms in Cinebench 24 single core when run on its highest performance mode. This issue doesn't occur on its default performance mode. So for now, we are showing you its highest scores, as we are pretty confident this will be resolved in the future. In multi-core, it's the opposite story. You can really see the downsides of this processor versus other laptops in a similar price range. They are simply not strong performers for applications that utilize many cores. It is destroyed by Qualcomm, even in their comparable 8-core chip. Our VivaBook with that processor draws the same amount of power as our Slim 7i Aura Edition with Lunar Lake. That being said, Lunar Lake does perform similar to the Core Ultra 5 125U in our Yoga 7i 2-in-1, and draws less power to do so. Now, some folks may point out that we haven't included the fastest X Elite processors in our graphs. The Slim 7X is the best performing X Elite that we've tested because of how much power is fed to it. It beat out our laptops with supposedly faster X Elite processors, so that's why we are showcasing it here. By the way, we did receive a late-breaking note that there is a performance issue with Lunar Lake on a preview version of Windows. We have verified that our results are not being affected by this. Now, let's take a look at power draw. Under max load, these Lunar Lake chips appear to be pretty frugal in their power draw. 25 watts for the ZenBook and 30 for the better performing Slim 7i. They are a lot lower than the Zen 5 chip in our VivaBook and the X Elite chip in our Slim 7X. But of course, as we showed you, they perform worse. To give you a clearer picture of what's really going on with these processors' power efficiency, Josh is going to walk you through our scatter plot. Our power efficiency scatter plot shows you how all these processors perform at various power draws. We want to see high performance for low power draw. We ran each laptop on all their performance modes. We've even added in some larger high performing laptops to show you how these processors scale with increased power draw. Here's what we're seeing. When laptops draw 30 watts or higher, Apple's MacBooks with their M3 chips continue to be the most efficient. The next most efficient is AMD Zen 5 HX370 chip. After this, it's much of a muchness between Intel's Core Ultra 9 Media Lake, Qualcomm Snapdragon X Elite, and AMD Zen 5 365. Now, at lower power draws, which is the kind of power that these new Lunar Lake laptops will run at, it's a different story. Here, Apple still wins, but Qualcomm X-Series and AMD Zen 5 365 chips are the next most efficient. They both follow a somewhat similar curve. Big find of this video, Lunar Lake is not as efficient as those other processors. It is an improvement on Meteor Lake, but it is still not competitive. It seems that one reason that Lunar Lake is able to deliver such impressive battery life, which we will show you in a second, is because it is just not that powerful. By the way, Qualcomm Snapdragon processors don't allow you to measure their exact power draw. We had to measure power draw from the wall. We then subtracted 12 watts for the power needed by the rest of the laptop, the screen, that sort of thing. We came to this number after testing numerous comparable laptops with other processors. We monitored their power draw from the wall and then subtracted out what their CPUs used. That got us to an average of 12 watts. So our Qualcomm power draw numbers are not precise. They should be viewed as directionally correct. All right, let's now go over heat and fan noise. In light use, these Lunar Lake laptops have none, which is great. 
This is the same as most of the Qualcomm laptops that we've tested. This can't be said though for all of the AMD Zen 5 laptops. We notice several of them can get quite warm in light use. You'll need to watch our individual laptop reviews though to find out which. Now, when the processors are run under a heavy load, the heat you feel is dependent on the cooling of the specific laptop. The ZenBook S14 with Luna Lake got warm, but the Yoga Slim 7i Aura Edition stayed extremely cool to the touch. Here you can see one of the issues that we've mentioned with Snapdragon laptops in our prior videos. To run fast, they must be fed lots of power and then they get noticeably warm to the touch. When it comes to fan noise under max load, both did very well. Our AMD Zen 5 VivoBook on the other hand is much louder. When we take a look at the CPU temperatures that these laptops ran at during a 10 minute torture test, these Lunar Lake processors run relatively cool. No surprises given their lower power draw. Here you can see why our AMD Zen 5 laptop is warmer. It runs an average of 20 degrees hotter. This also happens with our Core Ultra 9 Meteor Lake laptop. Keep in mind, both those laptops perform significantly better as I've said. Now on to battery. To see if these processors can maintain their full performance while unplugged, we ran Cinebench while on battery. Both Lunar Lake laptops maintain their full performance, which is good. But once again, they don't perform that well to begin with. Our Apple and Qualcomm laptops did maintain their performance on battery as well, but our VivoBook with Zen 5 was not able to do so. We don't love testing battery life as a part of these CPU videos. There are just so many factors that play a role, such as the size of the laptop's battery, the screen's resolution, and higher resolution displays can drain the battery faster. We have a short on this linked below. Our ZenBook 14 with the older AMD Zen 4 processor and our Yoga 7i 2-in-1 with Core Ultra both have a lower resolution display. We will indicate this on screen, so consider that when you're looking at these results. To test battery life while running performance tasks, we ran Cinebench on a loop for 30 minutes while unplugged. Our ZenBook S14 Lunar Lake performed very well. The Slim 7i did not do so well. Keep in mind the Slim 7i Aura Edition has a larger display, a slightly smaller battery, and it performs better, running high performance tasks like this one. So it's not apples to apples. And on apples, the MacBook Air with its M3 delivers similar performance to Lunar Lake as we showed you, but lasts longer while on battery doing performance tasks. The next battery test we ran was a full rundown while playing a movie on repeat with brightness set to 200 nits. All laptops were on their lowest performance modes. Taking those two laptops with lower resolution screens into consideration, we feel confident that the ZenBook S14 with Lunar Lake is the real winner here. Check out how well the Yoga 7i 2-in-1 does with the older Core Ultra 5 125U processor. Even though, as I said, it's got a lower resolution display, most of its long battery life is likely due to its lower powered chip. As we showed you, it performs the same as Lunar Lake and Multicore. So for those on a tight budget who want long battery life, you can buy a laptop with this processor instead. On this battery life graph, you'll notice that the Surface Laptop 7 and MacBook Air do not do well. These laptops have significantly smaller batteries. This is very useful when shopping for a laptop itself, but to compare processors more effectively, we have normalized all results to have the same size battery as the MacBook Air. The winners are still winning, but you can now see that the M3 MacBook Air and Surface do much better. Just jumping in here, you may have noticed that our full rundown state's inconclusive for the Aura. We ran it twice and I wasn't confident in what we saw. Since it is such a long running test, rather than delay this video, here is our four hour battery rundown instead. We'll put that other result in our upcoming review of the Aura, so get subscribed for that. Time out again. If you are wondering why the results of this test do not align with the performance efficiency scatter plot that we showed you earlier, let me explain. Video playback is an extremely low power task that is heavily optimized by most processors. Our scatter plot was covering performance tasks, which aligns with Apple's win in the 30 minute battery rundown we showed you. All right, let's take a look at those juicy new integrated graphics of the Lunar Lake processors. We are going to start with wildlife as all of these processors run natively on this test, and therefore we can truly see what these graphics are capable of. You can see that Lunar Lake is indeed at the top of the pack and a good step forward from prior Intel processors. It performs almost as well as the integrated graphics of Apple's M3 processor with the 10-core GPU variant. Now we'll look at TimeSpy, which is a DirectX 12 benchmark and more realistic for gamers. Here you can see this is a massive win for Intel. These integrated graphics are getting close to the performance of the dedicated NVIDIA RTX 4050 in the Dell XPS 14. That does run at low wattage though. Now, for most of our reviews of Snapdragon laptops, we did not show TimeSpy, because it doesn't run natively on their CPUs and therefore it makes them look bad. Same goes for Apple. Not including them here would be unfair though. It lessens Intel's win. In the real world, a lot of games won't run or run well on Qualcomm or Apple CPUs, and that is a win for Intel and even AMD. Now, we have been showing you total time spy score, which includes both the GPU and CPU. When we show you just the GPU score, Intel does even better. This reinforces that these processors are being held back by their poorer CPU performance. This is relevant for demanding applications like video editing. So we may tailor sit down and do some video editing on each of these laptops.
I was working on shorts with simple effects and one or two layers of 4K footage, nowhere near as complex as what we do with our full-length videos. I edited on both Lunar Lake laptops against comparable ones from our graphs. We assumed that these Lunar Lake devices would do the best because of their strong iGPU performance. I was surprised that all of these performed somewhat similarly for the simple shorts I was editing. This is probably due to these shorts being basic and mostly just hardware-optimized encoding and decoding of video footage. Where they differed was on export, where the MacBook Air did the best and the new Lunar Lake ZenBook came in a close second. This may be due to the faster memory speeds on both of these devices. Overall, a pretty good experience on almost all of them. The only one I had an issue with was the Slim 7X, because the latest version of Premiere doesn't run on Windows on ARM. I was forced to use an older version, which disrupted my workflow. A little note though, as memory is on board the chip, I would advise you get a 32 gig version if you want to do video editing on any of these new laptops. Now, back to you, Josh. All right, before we end, we have to talk about the biggest load of crap in laptop buying in 2024, AI. Specifically, AI tasks that run on your laptop itself, also known as edge computing. If you care about it, here are the manufacturer stated tops for each of these processes. Benchmarks have been recently released that do enable us to now test the MPUs themselves. Speaking transparently though, I think there are better ways for me and my team to spend our time serving you. Running AI tasks on your laptop itself, at least right now, is just marketing hype. Its sole purpose is to convince you to spend money to upgrade your laptop when you just don't need to. Real generative AI is done on very powerful remote server farms. All right, we hoped you enjoyed this video. It was a hell of a lot of work for the whole team. Since I gave my conclusions at the beginning, I'm going to keep this brief. This Lunar Lake release has clearly demonstrated that Intel can innovate. I don't know what they've been doing for the past five years or so, most of which they delivered very little improvements. But I'm glad to see the Jedi have returned. Perhaps Qualcomm barging into the laptop space had something to do with this, so hats off to them. Now, Lunar Lake laptops, they didn't win in every category we looked at, but they won or did very well in most of them. Laptops with these new processors are going to be great for casual users and those who want a lightweight portable machine, especially one that is capable of some solid gaming. And I must say, this release has made me super excited for what Intel has coming for larger high powered laptops with Arrow Lake. In fact, given the pace of innovation that we've seen across the laptop space this year, it is one of those rare times that you may want to think twice about saving money and going with a laptop from a prior year. You'll be missing out on a lot. We'll talk more about this in a future video. And on that note, get subscribed and hit that notification bell. We have dedicated reviews coming on both these two new laptops. If you want to see our favourite laptops right now, head on over to our website, that's where you'll find them. Last announcement I promise, I have a second channel. It's all about how to be successful in your career. I work my way right up the corporate ladder to the highest title level that you can get at a Wall Street bank, Managing Director. And I started as a junior software developer. That channel is all about how I achieved this and how you can be more successful in your career. There are some really cool videos already out on the business channel, so go check them out. Till next time, go do something awesome with your day and I will catch you later.